Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mabley's message is titled, Beholding God's Glory. And our musical guest is Suzanne de Groot. Thank you, Suzanne de Groot from Hope, British Columbia, for that anointed song. And now sharing from my heart in Christ with great joy a message I've entitled, Beholding the Glory, which enables oneness. Now what on earth does that mean? <laughs> you know, Jesus in his prayer, his farewell prayer, I don't mean the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, a beautiful prayer to pray. I'm talking the prayer he prayed in John 17. The Lord Jesus prayed that we would have his glory. And he also prayed that we would be where he is to behold the glory. You need to behold the glory on a continual basis for the oneness that Christians have with Holy Father through Christ the Lord to be manifesting in your life. And that's where the strength is to go through life more in God's strength. <laughs> Just think about it. Take a deep breath with me, all you believers out there. Oh, God intends for you and I to go through life in his strength. Even St. Paul said in Colossians 1, he said, I labor according to God's strength, which works mightily in me. And that wasn't only for Paul, it's for you and me. <laughs> Oh, the blessings of being a Christian, having Jesus Christ as Lord and experiencing his glory in our lives. And that's what this message is all about. I want to share insights about our inheritance of having the glory of Christ manifesting in our lives, which enables the oneness 
enables us to be where Christ is in victory. We are with him positionally. I'm going to prove all these things by God's word in a few moments. But it's so important because when you have God's glory manifest in your life, you have his presence. <laughs> and I'm just believing for these truths that I'm sharing with you, which have been coming in a deeper and deeper Rima uh, word of God to my own personal life over the last year even. And, and as the months go by, stronger and stronger. And I love giving uh, fairly recent revelations to people because to me it's like they're hot, after, hot from the press of God. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for these revelations. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation be upon you. Your understanding illuminated the knowledge of God, the hope of his calling on your life, and what is the exceeding great power towards us who believes, and what is his inheritance in you saints. And isn't it interesting how God calls us saints? I don't think anyone, any one of us believers are to totally, truly living up to that title, but it's something you grow into, amen? By the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, by our choices, by our yielding to Christ as Lord, amen. And he does it, hallelujah, Father. We are Father's workmanship. Oh, dear ones, we yield his clay and he does the work. How refreshing it is to know that. Let's go in to how we can buy our inheritance it's according to the word of God, receive and believe for God's glory to be in our lives. First of all, hear a description of glory. The word of God says, according to Isaiah 60 verse 1, in my Spirit-Filled Life Bible, Word wealth, it says kabod. The glory of God is the kabod of God, the presence of God. It's a weightiness. It's substantial, heavy, glory, honor, splendor, power, wealth, authority, magnificence, fame, dignity, riches, excellency. The root of kabod is chabad, to be heavy, glorious, notable, or to be renowned. In Old Testament, heaviness represented honor and substance, while lightness was equated with vanity, instability, temp temporariness, and emptiness. You don't want that in your life, neither do I. I believe that Christians worldwide, not many have really walked into the full inheritance as God's children. Myself included, I am believing God more and more. Remember the story of Caleb in days of old when he went up to David and he said, grant me my inheritance. He was 80 years old and he had an inheritance in the promised land. And he said profound words. He said, I have the strength, full strength that I had in my 40s to take any giants in that land. Give me my inheritance. Now, how that relates to my message today is, claim your inheritance of God's glory. I already explained what glory means, the kabod, the presence of God, Christ in you manifesting himself in his glory. Oh, what a heavenly place that would be for us Christians to enter more into that. Now, let me prove these things to you as it is your inheritance as a Christian having Jesus Christ as Lord, according to God's word beginning at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. And I've set my heart to memorize those verses. And I memorize usually Old King James. It says, God, rich in his mercy, even when we were dead in our sins, he quickened us together and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know what all that means? Three togethers three togethers in those few verses. Together with who? Christ the Lord. The oneness, together, together, together. And so here are the notes in my Bible about those three togethers. Sit together in Christ, three togethers. And it means we are in union with Christ in his resurrection, in his ascension, hallelujah, in his present rule at God's right hand. 
Hallelujah. From this place of partnership, he grounds that we share in the present works of his kingdom power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, in the John 17 prayer, and I hope there'll be time to get into that a little bit, when Jesus said, I have given them my glory, and that's a deeper revelation to me in the last while. Jesus, in his prayer to the Father, for you and I, his departing blessed prayer for us, Christians, John 17, pray it in your lives, dear ones. He said to the Father, I have given them my glory. Christians out there who have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord, realize today by revelation truth, God has given you, Jesus Christ has given you his glory. He has. That's what, his, that's what he declared in John 17. So you already have the glory. Now you want to behold the glory. Jesus prayed in John 17, he said, Father, I pray that they would be where I am, that they may behold that glory. So where is Christ? I ask you, where is he right now? He is reigning in majesty at the right hand, in the heavenlies, at the throne of God, having attained victory for you and me, Christians, and every one of you that will be, victory over the world, the devil, that old sinful nature we got from Adam. <laughs> so he is, he is reigning. He has granted you and I that victory already. So he prayed to the Father that we will be where he is. And then you see in Ephesians 2, that prayer is answered by the Father. He said, Ephesians 2, even when you were dead in sin, he made you alive together with Christ Jesus and raised you up together. What does that mean? A place of authority, a place of victory he has raised us up. Father has done that for us Christians. Raised us up together, made us sit together in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. So you know what I've been saying to myself this last while? Everywhere I am is a heavenly place. Christian, wherever you are, sitting there, standing, whatever you're doing, wherever you are, Christian, it's a heavenly place. Why? Because Father said he placed you there in Christ. How could it not be a heavenly place wherever you and I are? Because Christ is with you and in you, and he is so heavenly. <laughs> so, so heavenly. And so, this is also confirmed in Colossians 3. And if we have time to go there, 1 to 4, I will go there. But first of all, 1 John 4.17 says... Oh, I love these words. Love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world now. The Lord is not speaking in 1 John 4, 17 about the by and by eternity future. He is speaking about the here and now for Christians. He is saying for us Christians, as he is, Jesus Christ is, in this world so are we. What does that mean? It means that we have the victory that he attained for us. It means we can exude and behold his glory. It's in God's word. It's a promise for you and me. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's just so awesome. Recently in our services, which we have on Sundays in, uh, in Burnaby, British Columbia, one of my ministry team, Reverend Alice Mary Nook, she gave a prophetic word. And she said, God was going to do such things to make your head spin. <laughs> and that meant spin with joy. Well, I'll tell you, my head kind of spins with joy at this revelation I'm sharing with you. This message I've entitled, Beholding God's Glory, which enables the oneness with Him and Father. God wants it to be that you and I would experience his John 17 prayer to help us cope with life more. Absolutely. And what a prayer that is. Praise the Lord. Hopefully, I will get into at least a couple verses of John 17 prayer. In fact, I best do that right now. John 17, beginning at verse 22 to 24. This is only part of his prayer. And he said, Jesus said, Words are read in my Bible. He said, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. 
How much more stronger do you need to hear it, Christians? Jesus said, the glory Father gave him, he has given us. Hallelujah. That they may, why did he do it? It says here too, that they may be one, just as you and I are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you love me. <laughs> that's, that's revival. That's winning souls. The more we experience the glory of God, the more we experience our inherited oneness with Jesus and Holy Father by blessed Holy Spirit, the more people will come to Christ through our lives. Amen, amen. Oh, pray these blessings in and order the DVD if need be so you can refresh your memory of all these great blessings. They're all in God's word so preciously. Blessed Holy Spirit, thank you for showing me how to put them together. And verse 24, this is very profound. Jesus said, Father, I desire that also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold the glory which you've given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. So there Jesus said it, clear, clear as can be. The expression clear as a bell. <laughs> He said, he prayed, he prayed for you and I, Christians, that we would be where he is to be enabled to behold the glory I've been speaking of. So, where is he again? He's resurrected in victory at the right hand of the throne of God, where he ever lives and reigns, and he prays for all his people. <laughs> Jesus is praying for me right now. Besides that, I have intercessors here praying for this telecast and for you at this very moment. They love God, and I love God. Because I love Jesus, I feed his lambs, which I'm doing today. And so God Almighty wants you to realize your inheritance as a Christian. We are not victims, no way. <laughs> we are victorious, men and women of God growing in grace and realizing our inheritance to further his kingdom, for further your kingdom, Father, and honor you and live in victorious lives that we can help others. Not be so downcast ourselves that uh, we always have to build ourselves up, but be so strong in the Lord and experiencing your glory, your present oneness with Father and Jesus that we can help others to come along too. Amen. Now, I do have time for Colossians 3, 1 to 4, which is very profound and fits like hand in a glove with this message. Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 4, and it says there, If you are risen with Christ, and I already just shared that Father said he has raised us Christians up together, 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 seated us together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So the Colossians 3, verse 1, if you are risen with Christ, and we are, then he said, seek those things which are above. Oh, I pray you're doing that. And then he says, where Christ the Lord sits in reigns in majesty. <laughs> he does, oh, bless you, Jesus, you're reigning in majesty. And then he says, set your affections on things above. Oh, do that, beloved. Set your affections on things above. Don't get so bogged down with what you have and you don't have and what's happening to your kids or your family or even in the world or whatever. Keep your focus on God and his word and his love for you. Hallelujah. So set your affections on things above. Treasure your devotions with God. Treasure that time that you can spend with him to get refreshed for the day. Pray often to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Talk to him throughout the day. He loves it when you acknowledge he's with you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And, and when you leave your, your morning devotions, God, by the Holy Spirit, if you spent precious time with him, he will anoint you for the day. And then during the day, just like Nehemiah did, shoot up your arrow prayers, even if they're only in your thoughts. And just commune with God and fellowship with him. Hallelujah and you will grow in grace, and you will be an overcomer. Set your affections on things above. Hallelujah. And then the next verse says, Colossians 3, still going there. It says, because you are dead, 
I am dead. What does that mean? You're dead to the law of sin and death. You that brought Satan and sickness and evil. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is to reign in us Christians' life. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Through the death of Christ, you can reckon yourself indeed dead to that old sinful nature, the world, the devil, evil troubling you. And the next verse, verse 4, is so profound. It says there, very clearly, hallelujah, for your life is hid, hid with Christ in Father God. And when Christ appears, you will appear with him in glory. <laughs> glory. Now, some people may interpret that means in the by and by, the eternity future. I believe because Jesus has given us his glory, like he said in John 17, that it means the here and now. For it is so clear, verse 4, that my life is hid with Christ in Holy Father. And when Christ appears, I appear with him in glory. Folks, if you got Christ appearing with you in glory, do you know what will happen? If you are hid in Christ, clothed in Christ, you know what will happen? When Satan goes to trouble you, he'll see Christ all around you. <laughs> and he ain't going to trouble Christ. Pardon my poor English. Be hid in Christ with Father God, that Christ will appear and you'll appear with him in glory. Let this message sink in their hearts and minds. And Satan, you're bound. You can steal the words of truth to God's children that hear this word. May it be the living word to us. Rima, mixed with faith. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Dear ones who God loves so dearly, you know it says in the book of Luke, chapter 24, definitely the last chapter, the Lord Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me, Peter? And I think that was in response to three times that Peter had denied his Lord Jesus. And the three times Peter said, oh, I love you, Lord, and you know I love you, Lord. And then the Lord Jesus said something really profound. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Well, I want you to know, precious ones out there in, telephone land, in television land, I love my Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings. And because I love him, I delight to feed the sheep of God over their airways on the telecast. And you are an important part of keeping it going. You, by your letters, your encouragement, your gifts, you enable me, God's daughter, God's called one, to share his word over the airwaves, sharing the manifold wisdom of God and helping people grow in grace. So keep those letters coming and your prayer requests too. And and uh, I will do my best to respond to as many letters as I can, but I do read them all. And you're prayed for, you're being prayed for right now, precious ones. Remember that, God loves you and I love you with his love, amen. And now sharing for a couple minutes something to help you grow in the Lord and to bless your life. Number one, I've shared this before, it's um, going right into uh, a service, it's a CD, this one, going right into a service, a healing service, which we have often in the spring and the fall. And this Gail that's uh, doing the worship is one of the most anointed worship leaders I've ever heard. Just like she brings us into the heavenly presence of Jesus. And then I share an anointed word on healing. And it is my understanding, whatever God puts on your heart to preach, he's there to deal. He's there to heal. And so, war on sickness. Order that if you please. And that's for a gift of $20 to the ministry, a donation. Now, I have prayers. I have prayers to help you to know the will of God and to know God's word. All prayers are offered free. If you want to order this prayer, the scripture verses that I have put together to help us know the will of God and understand his word, it's the scriptures that help me the most. And also we have healing prayers too. We will send you absolutely free. And lastly, I have two more CDs for a gift of $20. My personal testimony, God took me out of a chaotic life into being his servant, hallelujah. And the other one is The Secret of Paul's Strength. It's a, a series of five messages of how to walk more in God's strength as Paul did. God bless you as you help the ministry and order any of these gifts to help you grow. In the love of Jesus, amen. 
sharing in the last few moments from my heart in Jesus to your hearts. The scripture says, Arise and shine, for your, the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Oh, Father, envelop us, your children, with the glory of the Lord. <laughs> it's your inheritance. Claim your inheritance as a child of God. Get in the word of God and just believe. God wants you and I to enjoy his glory that enables the oneness with Holy Father. Oh, it's just such a beautiful revelation. I've been sharing this message and I, I want it more and more stronger in my life and I hope that you desire it to be stronger in your life. To experience God's glory, God's presence, God's power, God's love, God's wisdom, all that he has for us. Scripture says in Psalm 91, it says that because we've set our love upon him, oh, set your love on God above all else. Because we've set our love upon him, he says, I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you've known my name. One of the names of God is Holy Adonai. Claim that God will be to you Holy Adonai. You know what that main name means? It means God in all his attributes and powers on our behalf. Oh. Let me pray that for you. As you yield to Jesus Christ as Lord, confess him as Lord, yield and follow him, I pray these things for you. I really do right now. Let's agree together, okay? Oh, Father in heaven, I know you come from my words and I treasure that, Father. We come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, praying, Almighty God, that the glory that Christ the Lord has given us, his children, envelop us this day, this hour, this moment, Father God. Oh, Father in heaven, let your glory fall. Help them to feel your presence, Lord God. In your presence, we have fullness of joy. In your presence, the enemy is made to perish. Help us, Lord God, not to just scratch the surface of our inheritance as your children, but to experience the full blessings of what our Lord Jesus has done for us through his life, his death, and his glorious resurrection and victory. Oh, Father, as he is, so are we in this world. And where he is, we are. And Jesus prayed it would be so. And we, God's children, agree in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make it so, Father, more and more as we go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner? that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.